Well, let's, let's just get straight into it. The uh, crew of CART 225 first time Dakar winners, you've had driven nine stages, completed nine stages of Dakar, and you got your first win, Henk Klaudig and Brett Cummins, congratulations. I mean, it must be blooming magic. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I know, it's, it's amazing. Uh, we've been smiling the whole day. <laughs> An unexpected smile. You know, you've, you've had probably the biggest emotional roller coaster type Dakar with disaster of stage one and then leading again and uh, having a mechanical and um, and today you before rest day you bring it in yeah no it's it's actually been mad um no well, this is only day five and uh sorry <laughs> Sorry, my Jeez, dad just popped in. Um, it would have been cool to have him join you there, man. <laughs> oh, <coughs> Sorry, you were. You, we can you call were him back if you want. <laughs> um, day five, you were saying. No, so yeah, it's it's only day five, and uh, I mean, so far we've had we've had two days, two days where we've broken off a rear wheel, um, and really come in hours after everybody we've the second time we we came back late at night we had to finish in the dark in the dunes and the other three days we we were leading the stage for two of them um and then the the last one we we won the stage so uh, it's been it's actually been a a, a mad a mad that car so far it's, it's so you e you're either leading or you've got a broken car yeah, that does, that doesn't sound too good. But <laughs> As I said it, it, I thought. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, look, Hank, I think, and and Brett, but uh, both of you just you you, we know that in South Africa that you've got the speed, and we had hints of it last year, Oof. and the fact that you come out now with the the big wheel car and just smash it is um, really reassuring. Got to be reassuring to you guys as well. Yeah. No, it's, uh, we, I, th I think from last year we knew we were sort of, or at least last year we knew we were close to the pace, um, but we didn't really know what the, what the pace should be at that car. Um, it's quite difficult to judge here yeah, because it's very different racing uh, to South Africa. I mean, there we have a lot more information. You have the track in front of you. It's not blind, completely blind like it is here. You've got stickers. You've got yeah. Uh, yeah. A GPS that uh, shows you the route as well. Yeah, so, so there, you, most of the time, you know where you're going and you know when you're off the road here. Yeah, yeah you, sometimes you don't even know. Even when you're on the road, you're not sure you're on the road. <laughs> so it's, it's very, very different. And we're still trying to figure that out, how how to know when you when you're on the pace and when you're not because um, mm. so far we've been we've been pushing or been been going well or we think we're going well and then the other guys are going even quicker yeah. and then other times we think we really struggling like today and we ended up winning the stage so I don't fully understand how it works here yet but uh, hopefully I'm trying my best or we're trying our best to get to the finish and hopefully by then we'll have a better idea of how this thing really works. <laughs> Gaining experience every day. Brett, the navigation, we've heard after stage one, oh, lots of, of stuff. How, how difficult is it this year? Is, it, is there a big change up from last year and is it super tricky? I think the organisation is always trying to uh, create challenges you know for both the, the driver and the co-driver and um, you, you're always going to have challenges what we found uh, when we were further back in the field it, it becomes even more difficult to navigate because there's so many different tracks going in so many different directions and you don't know you know uh, you know who's made the mistake and who hasn't made the mistake so um, it, it was a lot nicer to be closer to the front um, like we were yesterday oh. Um, it was actually going really well. Um, we got to a point where we caught up behind um, Carlos and Hank said to me, are you ready to open the stage? And uh, I said, well, let's go for it. And, and it actually went well. We, we weren't making any mistakes. Um, we we um, 
we had quite a bit of dust from bikes and that when we were catching them. And um, yeah, I think at that point, uh, Carlos came back past us because he was buzzing the bikes and we thought he was buzzing us. Um, but yeah, uh, that, then, then we had the mishap with the wheel. What actually happened yesterday with the wheel? Um, did it just fall off? No, the, the hub um, failed. No, it's some, something that hasn't failed uh, on the car before. Um, and it, it's not something that's supposed to break off. Uh, and I mean, we, we took a lot bigger hits yesterday during the day compared to where the wheel actually um, came off. Uh, so I think it's a bit of uh, fatigue or it's, it's a part that we definitely have to look at again. Um, there, I mean, there is a lot of different loads on the car now with the bigger wheels and the bigger suspension. Um, we can hit things a lot, a lot harder. And I think the terrain here is a little bit different to what we usually test in. And I mean, the races back home are also completely different to what you have here. Um, so I think I think it's one of those things you, you sort of learn as you go along. So um, this is definitely something that the, the team and Glenn, Glenn and them will look at and hopefully get it a bit better for the future. There, that's, those words would put shivers down any designer and mechanics things. <laughs> you can hit things a lot, a lot bigger and a lot harder. Um, you know, the limitation in the, the old car might have been the humans and the, the, the level of abuse that they could take in, in the car. From what we believe, it's a lot softer inside the car. And is, is it that the car's becoming more of a limitation or is it still the, the bodies that get shook around from the massive hits? No, it's not a lot softer in the new car, I can promise you. <laughs> Oh, no, okay. I've, I've had some serious physio in the last two days. Um, the, the, the worst is, uh, I think, f for me, is when you're, when you're looking at the, the road book or you, you've got your head down and you come over a crest and there's sort of uh, a, a ditch in the dunes that you, you just can't predict and you can't see or mm -hmm. anything like that. It's not that um, you, you're in danger or anything like that. We haven't, we haven't been taking any risks in that sense. You're just going to take a massive knock, yeah. and uh, geez, my neck's been put out of place more than once. And I mean, you sitting uh, down, you you working hard, you you're not seeing the terrain, and the it's almost like a sudden, out of the blue, uh, a, a massive jolt. Where at least your driver has got a punch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a sucker punch. Your uh, Hank's got uh, something to hold on to. <laughs> No, and, and no, but, I mean, so yeah. you know, the, the, the thing is, they, they have made the car a lot stronger and the big wheels and the big suspension travel does, does help or it did help to, to make the ride softer. But I mean, the job is to, to go and find the limits uh, within reason, obviously. <laughs> and if the limits have moved on, then we'll go. <laughs> we'll go a bit further and, and hit things harder until we see that it can't take it anymore. And I mean, the car really can fly unbelievably far now and you can hit big things really quickly. Uh, there are certain things that you should really not hit, like uh, all the rocks around here. But yeah, we, we were always searching for, for sort of a limit or where it is safe to drive. So. If, if the car can take bigger hits, then we'll end up taking bigger hits. <laughs> Spoken like a true racing driver. <laughs> um, the other thing, the, in the sand, um, the loose sand, the electric cars, the Audis and yourselves, how do you find the differences in performance of them? We haven't, we haven't followed one of them through the sand yet, but from what I can see, it, it looks it looks amazing through the sand. I, I spoke to Carlos a little bit, and they they're quite upset because they they're a little bit overweight. Um, mm. They're struggling to get their weight down with the batteries and everything being so heavy. Um, but I mean, we we followed Carlos through through some really high speed sections, and the car there was going unbelievably well. It's got it does, definitely doesn't have a lack of power. Um, and in the dunes, the, the power is instant and you never have to yeah. change gears. So he was saying himself that the car is amazing in the dunes.
So I think I think when they have it sorted out, um, it's going to be a proper machine through the sand. But I think we've got a wonderful three-way fight um, with the Audis, yourselves, and the Pro Drive. It's like South Africa. And we've got another team with the centuries. They did really well today again. Um, South Africa versus England versus Germany. It, this, it's a miniature World Cup. Yeah, no, it's actually, it's actually a... I must say it's a bit of a, a surprise that, that the, the Bahrain cars are, are so quick. They, they were really not... Um, they were still struggling with some development last year, so they yeah. they really upped their game and gotten the car to a good level. Uh, I think everybody's with the, with the rules changing from from one year to the next. I mean, anybody that brings a new car to Dakar doesn't expect to win it in the first in the first yeah. year, and this year everybody's brought a new car to Dakar, so somebody has to win it. <laughs> but uh, we can see that there's there's a lot of small issues going around with with all the teams which makes it really interesting but also really nerve-wracking at the end of the day yeah everything's I mean, up in the air with the nasa's position at the front always good to to try and defend the lead but the pressure inside your camp must be mounting and different roles start coming out to play where you've got cars supporting carrying spares and is it Hank and Brett that they've that Glenn sort of go go fast, put pressure, and see to see what the other guys do, and um, possibly Janil more supporting close support to NASA? Is is that starting to play out now, or is it still too early? No, I think not not yet. Um, there's a little bit to, that that uh, they have put space in some of the cars. Um, to, to carry for, for the, the front cars, but at the moment there, there's nothing, well from, not, not well we haven't been told anything yet, uh, <laughs> at the moment that they're just leaving us to, to try and, and finish every day and finish it well, I mean even, even NASA yesterday was really, he was telling us just to go drive your own race, so it, there's, there's no pressure on anybody or nothing is expected of anybody yet. Um, I think it, it might change, and we we happy to to help or to support uh, NASA to to defend the lead. Um, it is a really difficult uh, job to lead from the front or to defend a, yeah. a lead in a race like this because the days are extremely long, and you can lose you can lose hours on a day. So you have to be so perfect on every single day, and uh, something like let's say like us yesterday, if we had a spare hub in the car, we could have been stuck for maybe half an hour uh, and we ended up being stuck for six hours so it makes a massive difference and at this stage of the race like like you said you don't really know what's going to happen and everything's a little bit up in the air so something like that could mean winning or coming second at the moment it's it's a crazy mix-up now tomorrow you go into you do the stage that the bikes did today and bikes going to do the car stage so Brett, from a, it's you're not quite opening the road, but if they've made any changes to the bike route, it's going to to be quite tricky. Yeah, we haven't been to briefing yet. Uh, that's still in about um, 40, uh, 45 minutes to an hour, um, and they, there is um, comments that there's about a hundred kilometers difference of route between what the bikes did and what we're uh, we're doing and on top of that I'm not sure at what point they they canceled the bike stage but um, yeah they they canceled it due to uh, some complications and um, we're not gonna have a full route to follow yeah so it's um, you've got to be even if they are tracks from the bikes you've got to be 100% bang on your game to make sure that um, you don't like follow the the wrong uh, the wrong course. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's it's going to be uh, something new. Um, it's it's we'll just take it as it comes and and try and do it as as well and as safely as we can do it. Now you've got one more stage, and then that's the massive uh, milestone of rest day at Dakar. 
um, the, your plans for rest day, have you, you got, uh, are you going to take it as, comp as a rest rest day or try and stay in the same sort of rhythm and um, so that your body doesn't decide to shut down for the next day? We haven't really had a rhythm yet, so <laughs> there's nothing to stay in. Um, no, but we'll, we'll take it as a rest day. We, uh, I think we've taken some big knocks um, and we've spent a lot of time in the desert. So it, it would be nice to, to just relax and take it easy for a bit. Um, catch up on some sleep. Yeah, catch up on some sleep. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, guys, the, I think the whole of um, South Africa is really behind the, all the South African teams and cars and, um, at Dakar 2022. And from a race day point of view, we wish you all the speed and all the luck that, uh, that, that can come your way. And I hope you have a fast, safe race from, from now in. And congratulations once again, stage winners at Dakar, Brett and Henk. Thanks, oh, thank thanks college. Thanks for taking time out to chat and good luck. Cheers. Thanks, oh, Thank you. Cheers, Cheers. Thanks, man.